Hello YouTube, this is Daniel Rosal again on the 18th of March, which means, of course, the day after Patrick's Day. So uh, given, uh, given, given that fact, uh, today's been an, a surprisingly reasonably productive day. Um, but I've been a little bit, I took, I took a few hours in, off in the afternoon um, just to run a couple of appointments and something I was thinking about uh, during those appointments that I thought I would share uh, here in a video on YouTube was um, inbound marketing and how um, I think that really dovetails really, really nicely with uh, this whole theme of authenticity, which is something I really, really care about and something um, that I've been working on developing, um, not connected to business more as a personal thing, uh, you know, for the past, um, for the past, I'd say couple of years at this point, I've been on a general uh, trajectory of building up my personal brand, starting from pretty much zero. So I moved to Israel here uh, six years ago in three months. So that's quite a long time. And I actually changed my name uh, before moving to Israel, a couple of years before I was born, uh, Daniel O'Carroll. Oh, I'm trying to say, say, say that right. It sounds, it almost sounds weird now to say my own name, but that was my birth name. That was my uh, late father's name and then I took my maternal my mum's surname before moving to Israel so I did some writing under my old name I, I, I ran a student news site I contributed uh, articles to uh, various websites for a number of years so I had like decent clips uh, and I had something of a digital footprint of like a web presence but when I did this name change, it basically set things back to like zero, particularly as very shortly thereafter, uh, I made Aliyah and I moved to Israel. So um, for that reason, it's always been, I've been kind of uh, keeping one eye on my personal brand over the last couple of years. And as a freelance writer, I just think that this is so important. And if I have one regress, it would be actually not putting enough time into inbound marketing. Um, in other words, I... When I got started freelance, so I've been doing freelancing for five years, three years full time, a couple of years um, as a part time side hustle, as they call it. And when I started and I was, you know, trying to find my first clients, my first thought went to cold outbound methodologies like, you know, your classic um, cold emailing. Um, it's it's I think job posts are also considered an, an outbound method because, you know, you are applying you're interrupting. And I think that's the real difference between outbound and inbound. There have been terrific uh, courses, books, podcasts. There's no shortage of material on inbound, the inbound philosophy. But I think at its core, it's, you know, well, you, you can look at inbound by talking about uh, inbound strategies like content marketing, social media, or you can look at inbound in terms of just purely directional. Are you going out to um, advertise, to interject your message into people's lives, or are you going to put out material to the internet that is going to attract people to you? And the first is the first, the classical model of marketing, the, uh, you know, the, the, the advertising, in other words, the paid media exposure, the uh, nowadays, the PPC, that's all outbound marketing. Um, and nowadays, uh, there's so much more emphasis on inbound. And not only that, but inbound generally um, is accepted to high, have a higher return on investment, which makes sense for um, at least one reason. And that's that it's generally a lot cheaper to do inbound. So there's no such thing as free content. And this is one, one myth for freelancers I want to dispel, the idea that inbound is free. And when you think about your work as a freelancer, your time is your money, right? So you have an hourly rate and every time you're involved in an activity like creating a blog post or recording a podcast, you're taking time out of your day that could be spent on other activities. So there's an opportunity cost there. Now, I'm not even talking about, for example, the webcam bought here for a couple of hundred dollars, um, reasonably good webcam that I'm recording this on, the headset, there's money involved in everything when you really think about it, both from your time and from the capital expenses involved. Um, but generally speaking, they're pretty small, particularly compared to outbound 
when you're talking about you know the vast amount of money you can spend on media exposure. So inbound both has a high ROI and it's cost effective. Now what's worked for me, um, and this is uh, when I was recording the first take of this video, I unfortunately, I kind of lost my train of thought, but um, what I was talking about uh, was how what I really like about inbound and connect with is the fact that it rewards authenticity and authenticity. This is going to sound super, super cheesy, but authenticity is like the core value I've been striving towards for the past couple of years. And I mean that as like kind of personal development objective. So I think that growing up, I, I for a long time, uh, wasn't so comfortable in my own skin. Um, wasn't so comfortable with sharing the stuff I'm really passionate about and believe in and uh, quite like hidden. And my goal uh, as just, this is not a business, I'm, I am talking about inbound marketing for business here, but this is for me a personal goal, but I can see that the more I move towards this personal goal of being more authentic, being more open, being more transparent, like sharing stuff with people, not, not being uh like closed off basically and that's something as i said i like struggled i have struggled immensely with uh i'm naturally a very very private person not necessarily a shy person um but i just have like boundaries and firm boundaries and uh um i don't think that's helped me actually um I, there are reasons for it that it's this would not be the time and place to go into them uh but um they're not helpful uh, anymore, uh, particularly from a, from a professional standpoint. So um, inbound is a way that if you are able to share what you're really passionate about, you will be you will be rewarded. And the mechanism is basically that you can't really fake passion. You can't really fake something. If you want to create really exceptional content, w whatever type of content we're talking about, whether we're talking about vlogs like I'm recording now or we're talking about podcasts or we're talking about blogs or we're talking about social media you can fake authenticity and genuine passion so when you approach a subject and uh, this is why I think it's really important to think a bit strategically about your freelance business uh, whether that's a freelance writing business or some other kind of freelance business when you approach it more strategically and you really firm up on what am I actually passionate about uh, and this is, again, a process I'm belatedly going through. My kind of personal development uh, has kind of come first. And now I'm, now I'm just really getting the, the wheels are twisting for me thinking about my business. Um, but once it's worth spending a bit of time thinking about what makes you different from other freelance writers, what makes you different from other freelance graphic designers and um, what are you really passionate about in the work that you do because when you confirm up on that you'll be able to create content that somebody who isn't passionate and isn't being authentic they're just putting out stuff to fill up some keywords that person would not be able to create it so something uh, something cool i've noticed is uh and this has been the last couple of weeks i've had like such i've had a few really random things happen uh just from a new standpoint, um, a radio station contacted me in Ireland uh, because I've written about, actually, I, I, I'll, I'll jump, I'm jumping the gun here uh, by, by telling you how that happened. So radio in Ireland approached me to do a slot in my hometown talking about uh, emerging from lockdown here in Israel, like the pandemic lockdown. Um, then a newspaper journalist from like the main newspaper in the country, the broadsheet, um, a broadsheet newspaper called The Independent, they got in touch with me and I had to go out and like record myself. Um, then a couple of podcasts got in touch with me here in Israel, here in Israel, not connected with anything to, to, uh, to Ireland and pandemic. And then a TV station got in touch with me about recording. Um, they wanted me. So yesterday when I was in a bar here in Israel, an Irish bar, they, they wanted me to record like video clips. So that's going to be on like this, this big TV show. So these were cool. Now, these are not commercial ops. I actually uh, was, will be paid a contributor's fee for the TV. It's not very big and it's not why I did it, but uh, it just shows you that, uh, you know, financial stuff can come out of it. So th the point of this is how, how did this kind of little PR, if you're looking at it from a PR value standpoint, how did this 
how did this come about? Um, and the answer is that I wrote things I care about Ireland. I wrote this blog post on Medium called Ireland versus Israel. And I just kind of ran through as an Irish person living in Israel, the way I see the culture as being similar, the way I see them being different, the things I like about living in Israel, the things I dislike about living in Israel. Um, and it was a really like meaty, meaty long post, 45 minute post. Um, and I just put everything kind of like everything I had into it, like everything I really had to think, had to say about Ireland and Israel, I just kind of zoom. And that has ranks. I get feedback about it, not all the time, but like, you know, regularly enough. Uh, and the beauty about inbound marketing and inbound generally is that the value accrues. So like, if you do cold contact as a freelancer, let's, let's roll this back to freelancing. If you do cold outreach, so you're doing your kind of mail merges or you're doing your primarily mail merges, by which I mean a cold email, whether you're using a mail merge program or you're just doing a one by one or you're, or, or you're doing LinkedIn pitching is another big one. So adding people on LinkedIn with a little pitch in the contact form, whatever you're doing, um, the value diminishes, right? So you send out your cold email, you send out your cold pitches, um, you may get a response, you may not get a response, but once you, once you're done, you're done. Once you've sent out stuff, there's a chance in three to six months, someone will go back through their old emails and respond to you. But it's fair to say that what your results are after one week are going to be going to look very like what your results are after one year. You're getting a pretty good uh, preview for the effectiveness of the campaign. Not so with inbound marketing. With inbound marketing, you put up stuff on the internet and as you grow your personal brand, as you grow your followers, like if you think about Medium, you write more or you tweet more, you get more followers. And therefore each time um, you're getting a larger and larger audience each time you put it out, there's people backlinking to your blog, to your social stuff. So it's an ecosystem that unlike cold contact, which basically diminishes in value over time, you have actually increasing returns over time. So that's something that is just like incredibly powerful. And I've heard stories of people who uh, wrote one really, really effective blog post. And I, I'm not talking here from an SEO standpoint, um, as I've talked about in my previous vlogs and on my professional YouTube channel. Um, I'm not really such an SEO guy. I know how to do SEO research. Um, I know uh, how to look up keyword volumes, but I'm more looking at stuff from a messaging perspective always, from a communications perspective, from a holistic uh, branding and marketing perspective. So that's really the... Um, for freelancers, um, particularly, that's why I think inbound is so powerful because, you know, if you take your average medium-sized organization with maybe 500 people in a company, let's say they have a sale force of 20 people. Um, now, let's say your average lead conversion ratio for me is about uh, four to one. So I speak to four people, four leads. One of those becomes a client for me. Now, the good thing here is that as a one-man freelancing shop, I couldn't even handle a lot of leads. Like I don't have the, the bandwidth uh, for if 200 people wanted to, to speak to me. And I did this once. Um, I did a cold emailing campaign at volume. I got tons and tons and tons and tons of leads. And my time was like monopolized, literally, for about three months. I was taking calls in the morning. I was practically taking calls when I was in the shower. It was nuts. Um, as freelancers, we don't, um, we don't have, we're, we are the sales force. We are the marketers. We are the executors. We are the project managers. We are the people fixing our IT. So therefore, when we don't have, um, a sales force to outsource the sales work to, we have to basically, um, be selective about our time. And that's when, that's where, what I find with inbound is. I was listed, and this isn't an attempt to to be, uh, you know, cringeworthy self promotion. I was listed as a cybersecurity ghostwriter to watch for 2021 by uh, Cybercrime Magazine, and that's only been online for a day. And I got a query two days ago, uh, and it, it, sorry, yesterday, yesterday, literally yesterday, uh, somebody asking me, uh, "Oh, I saw you were uh, sorry." They didn't mention this, but I can't think. Um, I can't think really how else 
and that they would it just seemed way too coincidental yesterday I got an email asking from a marketing agency uh you know saying we need cybersecurity content uh we've come across you can you send your rates now there's only a one in four chance based on my previous um experience that that will become a customer but i'm already starting uh i find typically from a much much better standpoint um they've come to me and that oh, it sh it sh maybe it shouldn't be like this but it always makes a difference in terms of the psychology of the relationship they come to you you're in a relative position of power you go to people i always feel like there's an element of kind of uh begging for work in the background there um so there's that um they should know by virtue of the fact that they've come to you they should have done basic due diligence on your website if you've got a rates chart there um, for your freelancing rates they should have looked at that um so there's a lot of pre-screening done and that's another thing um in sales managing freelance sales funnels that uh is worth talking about and that's uh the 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 uh, lead qualification and how to do effective lead qualification through the bant methodology which is what i use uh, assessing for budget assessing for authority bant budget authority need and uh, timing um so there's a lot of that and there's another really 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 important uh thing about inbound and that is um with inbound i've had people come to me from big marketing agencies like global marketing agencies with like 20 offices worldwide right now for me to get that work as a uh, through cold pitching would be so so difficult you know an agency with like 300 400 people worldwide locations where do i even start who would i even find to pitch there so that that kind of client which is a highly desirable client because they're big and they're established and whatnot and they work with decent brands that would be really really hard for me to reach through outbound very very difficult um and inbound because I wrote on my website, I am a Linux writer. I created a page and I said, I'm going to list everything I write about. And one of the things I write about, and this is because I use Linux, is I, I write about Linux. I've written for Linux magazines. Uh, I've written client work for Linux. Uh, I write about Linux. So I just created a page saying, Daniel Rosal is a Linux freelance writer um, with experience writing about Ubuntu and different Linux distros. And I wasn't just trying to stuff in keywords, but I was, you know, going through what I what I write about, and that's how these people found me. Uh, they googled Linux writer, and because I targeted a relatively small niche, there aren't a ton of writers out there who use Linux and know about Linux. Um, I was able to rank well on that search engine result page, that SERP. So again, I'm not a SEO guy. I'm just um, a, a marketing guy that tries to use logic, and that was logical to me. Um, if there's a shorter queue, let's get content up about uh, about me being a Linux writer. And when people find look for Linux writer, they'll find my website. Um, so I'm always adding um, internal pages to my website based on either um, new things I've written about, new clients I've written for. Something I have seen uh, people do is put their portfolio on their on their website. Now. Um, what you'll do there is if you put a portfolio with hundreds of um, your writing samples, you will uh, add lots and lots and lots of keywords because they're all getting indexing. So my uh, portfolio is robot.txt disallow. I don't allow the Google bots and the search engine bots to index the directory. So those don't go into my results. Now that's what I currently do. I like to keep I like to keep control of what keywords uh, and text I'm adding into my site so that I can be strategic about it. And if I just dump everything I'm writing, that's my reason not to. But others may feel differently. Anyway, so the freelancing is um, inbound marketing, rather I should say, is something I think is really cool because um, as I'm developing as a human being, becoming more authentic and more transparent and more comfortable talking about um things and just what i'm passionate about uh you know just ideas for content just come out to me and as i said um you never know in general when you're writing when you're doing inbound marketing you want to be strategic 
you want to uh, come up with an editorial calendar, you want to come up with keywords to use. You don't want to just do it on the fly. But even if you do it on the fly, like I largely have been doing it, and even if you write about personal topics, you'd be surprised whatever you put out through into the internet, whether that's through Medium, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, but especially through Medium and written sources, whatever you put out, you create a funnel. And even if you write about something personal, like I wrote about Israel and Ireland, um, you will attract keyword traffic for Israel, Ireland, and the intent behind those searches may not always be purely personal. It could be a TV station, and I didn't expect, as I said, to get a a contributor's fee, but that's what ended up happening. Um, and you know, there's certainly also advantage for me as a freelance writer and journalist uh, to have a clip uh, of of a package I sent in for a national broadcaster in Ireland that if another TV station comes to me, I can say, yes, I've done this before. Please check out this YouTube. So it's a cycle that one thing leads on to the next thing. So that's basically why I think that inbound is really, really powerful for uh, everybody. I think it's a hugely powerful philosophy, but I think it's particularly powerful for, um, uh, for freelancers and small businesses because which they're very, very small sales resources they can do a lot more and they can tap into a source of lead generation that is actually increasing rather than diminishing in value as time goes on so that's why i think inbound is really really cool thank you guys for watching um anyone who would like to get in touch uh daniel rosal i'm on twitter uh linkedin um uh, the internet medium various platforms drop me a comment slash message with any thoughts you may have. Thanks for watching another video blog.